Hey guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar Show, and today I have a guest. You guys seen a couple guests before that were members and subscribers, but now I got a third, and I'm going to introduce you to his name is Alp, Hi, Joe. and Hi, you're Alp. on the channel. You're subscribed, yes. and you're a member. Yes. yes. Okay, and you brought this telescope. Why don't you uh, tell tell the viewers what you brought? Okay. Uh, uh, it will be my first attempt on it with you tonight. Okay. I'm excited about it. This is a iStar Acromat 127 millimeters F12. Right. Yes. So it comes with a hunk of weight on it, uh, around 30 pounds. Um, it's supposed to be a better end Acromat. So yep. looking forward to try it out with you. Okay, yeah. You know, I've tried the, you probably heard the Antares, had a version that was like F14, but it was only 105. Yeah. So I don't know if you ever heard that term called a perfect Acromat. So I am. Um, hoping that this is gonna be a perfect Acromat. Still gonna have color. So in, in those ones that I've seen, it can still be sharp, but still will have some color. So I'm hoping it's going to be that as well. Right. And we're gonna be comparing it to, bring it to the William Optics 126. Now it is an ED, so it is, some of you might say, well, you're comparing an Acromat to a ED, uh, medium high end, but you know, this is where sometimes it doesn't have to be exactly the same. It could be slightly different, but they're both the same size. 127, right? Yes. 126, yep. that is a 53 lens. So it's only a doublet though, not triplet, but a well-made, you know, Acromat, maybe. Let's see, how, I mean, it's hard to guess. And this is why I love testing, yes. because you never know. Actually have yeah. a chance to do it side by side. And you same magnification. Exactly. Right, so let's, let's get to it and we're gonna see what happens? For the name of science. So right now we're at, on William Optics, I have a 24.5 millimeter, super wide, which gets us, I can't remember exactly, but I believe um, gets us 40 power. And on the iStar, uh, we're getting 47. So a tiny bit more, but as close as we can get. I guess take a look at yours. The Mine is lines. tiny. Yes, same here. Uh, so it's probably going to be hard to distinguish. I do see um, where the where the rings are. I can see three little tiny, uh, I guess it would be, uh, it could be the moons, it could be stars in the line of sight, but I think it's a couple of moons. I can see the couple of moons, and yeah, why not? Okay, oh, three I see moons. Three, I see like three yeah, tiny three moons. moons are visible now, okay. Okay, and then I see a big one that's on the bottom, but that's just a star, I think. All right, let's uh, So let's this. switch. And this I'm gonna put down, so I can, actually, I'm gonna use the chair, guys. I don't normally use a chair. Okay, what's nice is that the iStar has a nice moon moonlight focuser. Uh, I know I actually bought one for the Takahashi TSA back in 2019, if you guys remember. Mine, with tax, shipped and everything, and they're paying seven hundred and thirteen dollars. Yeah. It's it's expensive. There's something. Okay, yeah, I see the same stars. One just beneath the um, the ring, and then a couple off to the side, to the left. Or oh, very similar images. Yeah. I would say I cannot see any. I don't think I see really any false color. You know, the I star is supposed to be like a high quality acromat, uh, a better figured lens. So that that could be one, and then. Saturn is not very bright anyway, so maybe if we were to look at the Moon or Jupiter or Venus, we might see a little, but uh, that looks pretty good to me. Okay, I think uh, I would call that like a tie, and uh, let's bump up the power. Okay, so on yours, the yeah, iStar, we're going to do a 13 angle. Hopefully it's still in the field of view. Yep, yeah, okay, mine's still fine. Seems like it. So at this power, it seems like it's about three times bigger. Okay, as far as I can tell, it's still pretty sharp at this power. I like what I see. I think my battery now did. Great. As I can see it now drifting. Oh, no. Okay guys, we had a problem here with the William Optics. 
I think it was becoming a little scared how close the image was coming. So um, the mount died. So I thought the batteries on the EQ6 maybe died, but it's it's not. It's not even activating even with an uh, AC power. So I don't. I got to look at it and see. So in the meantime, I grabbed the Vixen Great Polaris, which is a very good, if not one of the best uh, EQ5 type amounts. And being that the William Optics is only 24 pounds, I mean, there's like, I mean, I got to really move it. So I think it's rock solid enough. So let's continue this. And we were at the uh, 115 power in yours, I believe. That's right. And then, okay, let me get mine and then we'll come back. I'm hoping that the mount is savable, but uh, we'll see. Okay guys, we're back on. I guess on mine, looks pretty sharp. It is not tracking, but it's slowly moving. The ring looks pretty clear. And I do see a space between the ring and the planet. And we're gonna switch in a second. How's yours? I can see the banding pretty sharp as well. The bands are there. Similar like between the planet and the ring, you see the gap. No Cassini division. It's difficult to see this year. But. Yeah, I think But yeah, this it's year like, this year is tough. It still maintains the sharpness at what hundred fifteen? Yeah, so 15, it's, it's yeah. still pretty sharp. I think if we pump it up to 300 after, maybe we might be able to, you know, hit to the Cassini, but... Let's okay, switch. let's switch. Yeah. Let's take a look. Oh, not bad. Okay, yeah, I, I do see the ring is sharp. The space between the ring and the planet is there. It's close, but I think the ice starts taking a little better use, sharpness-wise. Maybe. Yeah, it is maybe. sharp, yeah. Um, let me see the saturation on the on. Yeah. Is it still in the view? Yeah. This one has a more white view, but as far as sharpness, I think you're right. Um, I do see a tiny, tiny bit of like yellowing, but again, that's where I was saying Almost any acromat that's under F20 will have a little bit of chromatic aberration, but as far as sharpness, I think pretty much it could be a tie as well. Going away. Yeah, just use that one. They're, they're both pretty close. I think I would say they're even kind of a tie on medium power. So let's see what the ice star can do. So let's go to 250, which is a nice. about maximum. Yeah. And a six millimeter, and then. 250, what do I got here? 245 and a 4. Okay. So a 6 and a 4. They're pretty close, but I guess being F12, this one might be getting a little more sharper views. You think it's sharper there? A little more, right, I'll say. Hmm. Maybe okay, okay. But to let's push it to really. Yeah, to me, I see it as equal. Okay, we're both going to do yours first. It's relatively sharp, but it felt pretty faint. Uh, that's a little dim, that's the issue. Come take a look. Okay. Oh, that's not bad at all. Okay, this is a nice image. The ring is nice and sharp. Tiny, tiny bit of vibration. Probably to be rock solid, it would need your mount, the CGEM2. Would just be a little bit more flexibility. But, okay, I see shading on the top. The three stars, the band looks beautiful. Okay, take a look. That looks almost textbook figure to me. Oh yeah, it looks better on this side, for sure. I can't even see Cassini division a little bit. I thought I did too. Like I'm, I'm I... In, in between, like the the atmosphere vibration plays. Yeah. A role in that, obviously, but when it's stabilizing these gaps in between, you can't pick up on the Cassini division even at this angle. I will give it a try on my own eyepiece, also 6.7. Okay, this okay. One. Let's give it a try. Sure. I think this mount has a little bit of vibration. It's not as good, I think, as the EQ6. Yeah, if you want to switch. This one also is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I, I think the mount is not bad, but it has a bit more vibration, so that's a little bit tricky. You have to let it settle. We are using a zoom as well on here. Um, because we just can't get that same power. I'm about to try my 4.7. So. Oh, if we have 
four we're going to be at 209 then. so then we're too far of a difference and so okay. right yeah 209 to 250 is too big if i go to a four millimeter it's only five power which is close if we go to 4.7 we're at 209 it's too big of a gap to tell i think they're very very similar i'm actually surprised why don't we bump up the power yeah let's go to 4.7 Okay. And that becomes okay. Then we're going to be pushing it to 319. Oof, okay, that's way beyond. beyond. Yeah, definitely blurrier, but still not horrible. You know, if you wait for the atmosphere to stabilize in between, yeah, it is still decent use. Actually, you just need that moment where atmosphere stabilizes. Exactly. Oh yeah, actually pretty good. And this what 320? 319, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I see the Cassini division. Right? It goes Cassini, in and out. They have sharp views. Yeah. Not Color bad. is nice. Okay. I'm actually surprised, you know what I mean? Because normally when you hear of an acromat, you don't normally think, you know, it's going to, you know, everybody's gone away from acromats for a long time now. But I'm actually kind of surprised, guys. So at 319, I think. Coloring is not there, too. Yeah, I don't see much of a purple. I, I don't see any. So they really do a good job with these. I, I agree. Stuff, right? I, I agree. I would say, you know, if I mean the only downfall that I see is Wait. how long it is. Yeah, right. The wait and long. But if if you guys don't want to spend thousands for the same size, you know, type of thing, then you could go for something like this. Now this is well made better. Than a regular acromat or you know one made in china type of thing so i think they they did a really good job i think there and i think it's, it's a us yeah. made one yeah, yeah. Uh, i've never looked through an ice star i mean I've, I've heard of them but i've always been scared you know i don't want to go back to an acromat unless it's for <laughs> wide field viewing deep sky objects you know but as far as planetary i, I think it probably competes to that so if you guys are looking for a high quality refractor you know with good contrast yeah. i would say try this out uh the only downfall again would be the length but you know some people love the look of that long and refractor you know as long as you have a pr setup or you know those more advanced users i think they will not have the problem yeah the gentleman i got this from they had a pr setup on an eq6 right and they were saying they were studying details of the moon small craters yeah i agree from what up. i see uh, i could I, so they were able to i believe that yeah. uh, i mean or maybe get a uh, 12 inch extension and oh, yeah. so, so they even have 16 inch extensions and then that way you're not so far low or you grab a chair but um also your focuser is nice yes you got a nice it's, it's not the very smooth one the yeah. crap rack and pinion focuser that comes with the two inch or the six inch uh you know celestrons meads or whatever so i'm pretty surprised guys so i'm gonna give this a two thumbs up it's a really well made refractor i i know when we talked before i, I was kind of pushing you to like i think you should try to go ed yeah you know just because i mean if you want something more portable and smaller but you're probably going to pay 10 times the amount that's exactly you know i wanted to slowly get involved in refractors yeah you know, the sky is the limit with the refractors. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> True. Hey, I am glad to hear that from you. Yeah, I think it's very good quality for what it is. And uh, I was actually expecting less. I was expecting to, you know, as I said before, I've seen the perfect acromats where they see color, but they're very sharp. And this one, well, so far on Saturn, there was no color. Could be a little bit if we try in the moon, but for most people, they want sharpness yes. they, they want it to see all the little cratelets you know the cassini division uh, sometimes a lot of people say it but you don't always see it you know what i mean you see the rain but uh, i'm pretty impressed with what it is uh, i like that color scheme too the yeah, red. i think it's, it's nice you know beautiful dark blue it also helps help it uh, you know when it's darker too it helps with avoiding the stray light so that's okay. another good thing to it and do you know how, how many baffles or is it nice and well baffled too uh it is it is i don't exactly remember the number i think it's either five six baffles in there it's layered yeah, that's pretty it's, it's good progressive coming all the way to the, through the pipe so yeah i, 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 I read that it's a good cnc machining behind the design okay guys that's it for this episode 
I, we uh, have Alf who came to test first light on Saturn, you know, so that now it's great. And uh, side by side, so I was very impressed that it could actually compete to an ED re refractor, you know, and uh, there we go. So like, comment, and subscribe. Maybe we'll do another video. I am thinking, I am getting a five inch Acromat made by Mead. So it's probably made in China, most likely an F8, I believe. So after looking at this tonight, it's gonna probably blow it away. But would be nice maybe, since they're both same size, it would be good to see the difference between an F12 and an F8. Is it a little difference, yeah. medium difference, or big difference? Like, comment, and subscribe. Why not you? Why not me? Bye everyone. Okay guys, so this is what happened to the mount in the dark. It must have just, the button got shifted to the off instead of on and that's why it wouldn't work so i guess i didn't even think of that i thought it was a problem with the mount or the controller or something but nope it just accidentally uh, might have somehow hit the off and so it works hey guys just wanted to add that after the video ended we did take a look at the moon it was two days past full moon so there was a little bit of a terminator and there was some color on the moon as to be expected with any acromat it doesn't matter if you go to f20 but was still very sharp in contrast so i would say there are people that just hate chromatic aberration or false color if this is you then probably not the best scope for you uh, but again, very well made Acromat and co very cost effective comparing to an ED, uh, if it's a doublet or a triplet. No one has ever said that an Acromat can't get near uh, to, you know, an ED scope as far as sharpness and uh, contrast. But by buying an ED, like 51, 53, triplet 51, and then a triplet 53 or whatever, what it does is make it much, much shorter. And I think these days, you know, people want portability. I know that's me, and that's why I like the Ascar 140, because the focus part shrinks about eight inches, the dew shield shrinks, and I believe on that one video where I tested it, it was 29 inches long for a 140 millimeter refractor. So again, very good scope, does have a little color um, on the brighter stuff, but if you want sharpness and you don't want to pay thousands for this size, try it out.